Home Alone. Home Alone, part five. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Home Alone. <laughs> What was that? I don't know whose coffee this is, but I'm stealing it. So I'm actually all alone in this apartment because my roommates Kelly and Ashley left for a trip together. They're on a trip in Europe, I think. They're just like traveling around and I wasn't invited. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. Anyways, it is actually kind of nice having this apartment to myself. But yeah, it is a little bit lonely because I mean, it's a big apartment, there's no one here. My friend Nick is also out of town. So all my friends are just out of town. I'm all alone in the city, but you never really are truly alone if you live in New York. So I think I'm just gonna have to get out of the house, go onto the streets and uh, I don't know, try to figure out how to live with myself all alone. I remember when I first came to New York, I was all alone because I had no friends in the city and I was literally just like running around the city all day alone, trying to read books and I don't know. I don't even know what I was doing really, but I was just surviving, I guess. I want to say that was the summer of 2018, like my freshman year of college, just all alone in the city, trying to survive, reading books all day. And that was one of my most transformative summers. I think being alone in the city teaches you a lot about yourself. So I'm always surrounded by people because I know a lot of people in the city, but now that all my friends are gone and out of town, yeah, it could be good to just be alone again and think about life. So. I think I'm gonna do that today. book of choice right now is Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. I've been reading a little bit more recently. I'm trying to read like a hundred pages a day at least. But I don't know, after leaving college and just being out in the world, I feel like life happens and then you just forget to read. But one of the reasons I got into reading in the first place was I looked at people that I looked up to, successful people that I wanted to be like, and I just saw a pattern. I saw a pattern that everyone that I look up to, all my role models, Everyone that I think is really successful reads a lot. That summer that I mentioned, summer of 2018, I was living with my friend in Queens, and so whenever I would come into the city, that was like a 40 minute train ride. Every time I was on the subway, I was reading. And when I got into the city, I would go to a coffee shop and just read all day. Literally the most transformative summer of my life. And it has to be because of all the books that I read. I feel like who I am as a person is really just defined by the books that I've read. I don't know, it just like has shaped my identity so much. So. I'm such a big believer in it. Nowadays, you have your phone, you have TikTok, you have YouTube, whatever. So you're just really used to constant simulation. So I think a lot of people don't have the skill to literally sit down and have the patience to go through a book. Myself included, I notice when I'm on my phone a lot, it gets harder to read. But reading, I say this all the time, reading is such a life hack. Anyways, recently I've been reading a ton of investment books, like books about money, because we're kind of like entering a recession. Usually I don't talk a ton about finances. I do a little bit here and there on this channel, but I think now is a really good time to look into investing if you haven't already. I'm 23 years old right now. I only started making money like a year ago, honestly. So up until a year ago, I didn't even have any money to invest. And I think for me, it's still a very recent thing and I'm trying to learn as I make mistakes and I've made plenty of mistakes. I know a lot of you guys watching are probably in your 20s and maybe you don't have a ton of extra money to invest but they always say the earlier the better, number one. And number two, even if it's just a few dollars or just a little bit of money, if you're investing it and you kind of watch it and you have some stake, then you also get the experience because you're kind of bought in, the experience of how to manage your emotions or how to manage your money and figuring out like what works and what doesn't work. And you'll probably make mistakes, but I'm always on the side of, it's better to make those mistakes early on so that you can learn with it now. 
and then bring those lessons with you into the future than to not learn those lessons at all because you're afraid of even trying. Myself even, I'm still learning, but I would encourage you guys to also take that student mindset and go out and learn about investing or how to manage your money. I have always had a really interesting relationship with money. I don't know if I've ever talked about this on my channel, but my parents, they immigrated from Korea. They worked really, really hard to support me and my two older sisters. And yeah, when my family immigrated to the US, my dad was still in school, so he didn't have any income. We grew up on food stamps. Of course, eventually my dad got a job and then he was able to support the family. Ah, this is a very personal thing for me, but I remember always thinking that my friends had better houses, that they had better cars, and they had all the nice things. I very specifically remember you know, never hosting sleepovers at my place because there was nothing to do. There were no video games, there was no entertainment, we didn't have a big basement or anything. So I was always like, ah, I don't wanna host. I wanna go to my other friends' houses, which are really nice and have a bunch of fun things and cool things to do. I don't wanna say that's the reason it made me financially driven and I'm not just financially driven, but even in college, you know, I remember going to restaurants and always having to order the cheapest thing on the menu or sometimes not being able to go out and eat because I had no money in my bank account. That really shaped me, like having to say no to friends when they were like, hey, let's go out and eat and not having the freedom to eat whatever I want or decide to go out with my friends. That really shaped me. Like, I feel like it's a big part of who I am. It's a big motivating factor trying to avoid that because obviously that was painful to me at one point in my life. So yeah, being financially stable, being financially independent was a huge driving factor for me because for me it really just meant freedom. Freedom to do what I want, to make my own decisions, to not have to listen to anyone. I always feel like I worked really hard to earn the money that I made. At one point I was dead broke. I always talk about the dollar 85 cents that I had to my name in college. But yeah, because I once had literally no money, I don't take any money that I've earned for granted. And now I'm at a stage where I'm trying to think about how to make my money work for me. Of course, we all know about investing and you know we should invest our money, whatever, but how to actually go about that? You know, no one ever taught me. So I feel like it's kind of on me to go out and learn, whether it be through friends that know more than me or through books or YouTube videos. Just trying to be a student and to absorb as much information as possible. I feel like that's really important. Okay, I've been rambling, I'm sorry. Okay, so what did we learn today? Um, read books and invest your money. You're welcome. Okay, since my roommates are out of town, I'm on plant duty and I have to make sure everyone's plants are fed. So I gotta find, oh, here it is. Watering can. That's so cute. All these voices that I want inside my bed. Give me pressure like the warmth inside my head. I think you. I used to not really like real plants. Well, not so much that I didn't like real plants, but I used to just always have fake plants, mostly because, I don't know, it was just. I never thought to get real plants, I guess. But once I got real plants for uh for my place, I feel like it really it really adds to the aesthetic and really I don't know. I like having something alive in my room. And even though it's not like a huge responsibility to take care of my plants, I do kind of like just having a little bit of responsibility to take care of something and keep it alive. Also, I think it's because I spent a lot of money on this plant. So, if I don't keep it alive, it's just a waste. <laughs> My calendar says it's May, but it's almost end of June, so. <laughs> I always forget, I always forget to change the thing. Every time I take down a month on that calendar, I'm like, holy crap, it's been a month already. It just like reminds me, like time flies in the city. I realized earlier when I was talking about money, I didn't really share my investment strategy and this is not investment advice or financial advice. I just wanna share what I've been doing because I feel like I don't really talk about this. And the only reason I'm really talking about it right now is because we're entering a recession and it's one of those times where if you were gonna get into investing, now would be an amazing time to start. Me personally, what I'm doing is, you know, I don't know how long we're gonna be in a recession for, right? So right now the markets are going down, down, down and 
what my investment strategy has been, and this is not financial advice, but what I've been doing is every day I wake up, markets are down more, and I just buy a little bit more of ETFs and index funds. Specifically, I buy IVV, but you could also buy SPY or VOO. So in case you don't know, ETFs and index funds are market tracking funds. So IVV, VOO, SPY, all those just track the S&P 500. And the S&P 500 tracks the 500 top companies in the US by market cap. So when you invest in an index fund or an ETF, you're basically investing in, I mean, the US economy. So my personal investment strategy has been purely wake up in the morning, I see that the market's down and I buy more ETFs and I buy more index funds. I'm buying IVV and occasionally I'll mess around with other individual stocks, but not that often because I'm not a stock picker. I don't really know. So yeah, um, I'm literally just buying index funds, ETFs, and I'm planning to buy consistently and regularly for my entire life, but more aggressively over the next year. That's kind of like my timeline is over the next year, how much can I buy every single day in order for me to be buying aggressively over the next year, six months to a year. So that's my strategy. I'm not saying it's the best strategy, but you know, I'm doing what I think is best for me. So just wanted to share that in case you guys are interested. If you're not, I'm sorry that that was a waste of time, but I promise if you're not into investing, you know, it's worth taking a look at right now. It's a, uh, it's an interesting time. Okay, uh, I'm really hungry right now. It's almost dinner time and I gotta find some food. I just put out a what I spend in a week video the other day. Some of you guys saw that video and then Graham Stefan reacted to it and roasted the fuck out of me. It's like, how can I spend money today? Oh, let's go to these five places and get five overpriced coffees. He said I spent way too much money on food and coffee, which is true. And it's kind of interesting, like I put out that video about what I spend in a week and then I'm reading this book now about investing and Right around when I posted that video, we started to see signals of a recession and now we're kind of like really in that. Everyone is telling me right now, like, hey, Elliot, save money and invest that extra money. I don't know, all the signals are there and I'm like, holy crap, I have been spending way too much money on food specifically. So I'm making a conscious effort to cook more and I have been cooking more, which is honestly surprising for me. But yeah, it's nice. I actually have been enjoying it. So I'm gonna go get some groceries right now and myself some dinner. I think some friends might join me. There, there are a lot of interesting signals in my life right now telling me to save money, spend less money, invest more of it. And I might look back on this as a very important pivotal lifestyle shift. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Today we are making curry. There's this Korean curry that my mom always makes for me. And I only really know how to cook Korean food because that's all my mom really teaches me. Best part is it's quick, easy, and there's like five ingredients. All right, let's start the cooking montage. Boys are here for dinner. I made you guys curry. My mom's curry. Mrs. Choi's curry. Mom Choi's curry. Say. Hmm? Look at that. And it makes noises. That's how you know it's good. <laughs> it's ready. Cheers. Ding. Okay, Jed and Sean came over to cure my loneliness. Don't be lonely. I'm so lonely. <laughs> I'm Mr. Lonely. Just Harmony. kidding. Harmony. I'm alone, but not lonely. Oh, that's pretty deep. <laughs> Are you that guy? 
I'm listening to All Star. <laughs>